Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called 80 Seconds Cave by developer Florian Van Stryen. Uh, the goal here being to traverse as many floors as possible in 80 seconds. There's a variety of game modes and a whole bunch of challenges ahead of us. And before we actually get into this one, you can see here on the left we've got uh, our options menu if you're curious. Full screen on and off, sound on and off, music on and off. We can log into Game Jolt for stats and stat tracking as well as there are actually some achievements themselves here. Uh, which will actually give us a pretty good idea as to what exactly we should expect out of the game. So starting at the bottom, there's uh, Learning, Complete the Tutorial, Beginner, Complete Easy Mode, Magma, Start a Magma Level for the first time, The Real Thing, Complete Normal Mode. So there's quite a few challenges before we even start the actual proper game. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of things about not losing lives, different amounts of lives you have left, uh, the amount of seconds you have left, completing Hard Mode, so on and so forth, until you get to Extreme Mode, and then there's a Water Maze. Sounds like a lot of stuff to do here. And then we've got a Tutorial... Uh, which we're supposed to complete, wow, 1,357 times, uh, which is kind of excessive if you ask me. Then we've got easy mode, 1,245 times, normal mode, 504, hard mode, 251, and extreme mode, 190 times. Um, I'm probably never going to do that, but <laughs> let us at least give this game a shot and see how it is. Uh, we're going to start out with the tutorial because I have not played this yet, so let's see what happens. Uh, in this game, you've got only 80 seconds. Your time is always displayed in the top left corner. Press enter to continue. Uh, you might have noticed that your time is not yet running. That's because you haven't moved yet. Move with the left and right arrow keys. Okay, now we've moved. And now we want to run to the exit. I suppose we're playing as this, like, uh, sort of a pseudo-Pac-Man ghost kind of figure uh, as we traverse these caves. Uh, it sort of reminds me of something from Untitled Story, which was uh, a game that I played quite a while ago. Upgrade, fill floor with water, so I guess now I can move a little bit more freely through this space now that I'm not really bound by the uh, laws of physics and gravity. And then I got a whole bunch of uh, upgrades, which I should have probably read what they were. Uh, all spikes in the next level will be changed to flowers. Oh, that's terrific news. I'd much prefer flowers. So mission successful in the tutorial. Complete the tutorial, press spacebar, or enter to start playing. Uh, okay, it wants to take a screenshot. I guess we're we're good on that. Uh, yeah, okay, is spacebar also? I Oh, I didn't realize there was a menu going on in the bottom corner there. Uh, I was just reading the top. Okay, so we're going to play easy mode, four floors. Let's try it out. So I'm going to try not to take too many hits. We've got uh, five hearts in the top corner there. And as you noticed, our timer is going to be taking down. But there are upgrades and power-ups. Uh, that will aid us in getting through this challenge. So this time we've got a water floor, we've got some fishies on this one, and they're not going to be too much of a problem for me as long as I stay out of their way, but I can't quite handle that apparently. I know we've got like a monochrome looking level with a couple of diverging paths, and of course since I took the bottom there I seem to have avoided pretty much all semblance of danger, uh, which is good to know. So in case I run into that floor again, or something similar to it. We've unlocked the magma. Oh, I didn't realize that was actually hurting me, whatever it was that I just walked into there. Uh, of course, we've got a light source around us, which is going to help us uh, see, but that doesn't seem to stretch all that far. Now we've got some brilliantly luminescent lava there. All right, so it looks like we've actually traversed uh, our easy mode mission, and then we get this little uh, story at the end here. The historian William wrote the following about the great hero Holden. He started the first floor. It was a normal floor. He was hit by some spikes. Holden saw spikes next to him, power-up gave him some extra time. He came very near some spikes. He completed the floor. The hero still had lots of time left. He started another floor, had to swim because the floor was full of water. Uh, there were lots of dangerous fishes here. The hero dodged some spikes. When he looked around, he saw spikes. A flesh-eating fish hurt him. Wow, flesh-eating fish is pretty horrifying. Uh, well, I guess piranhas, right? Uh, he had found the end of this floor now. The hero still had lots of time left. He entered another part of the dungeon. It was very rocky here. Holden was hurt by a rocky ball. I didn't even notice there was rocky balls in this. Uh, the hero still had lots of time left. Oh, where am I? He came to the very <laughs> near some spikes, completed the floor while he had already completed three floors. He still had 54 seconds left. The hero now entered another part of the dungeon. The floor was uh, stony, and some of the stones seemed to be molten. A dangerous plant hurt him. A spike from a plant hit him. That was painful. The hero was on the brink of death. He saw magma next to him. He dodged some spikes. Holding completed the floor. He had completed all floors. His mission was complete. All right. Well, I get what you're after. Uh, 80 seconds cave. I kind of get the uh, the idea that you're putting together here is actually pretty ambitious and quite cool, and I'm not sure I've really seen too many other games ever attempt such a thing. The only problem is it reads really formulaically, to be perfectly honest. As you get through these levels, you're going to notice uh, these are the components that it's going to essentially tag and then show up at the end as, you know, lines of text. So if you were to actually elaborate on some of this and maybe extend 
the the challenge that our hero is going through, and you know our little you know gravestone tombstone character, uh, extend that hero's peril and plight into a real story with some metaphorical elements, and perhaps actually you know make more of a, a literary uh, literary uh, journey out of it. I suppose this is just very much exactly what we did. Uh, so I think there's definitely some potential for this concept. So let's try another one. Uh, I'm already I'm pretty surprised actually. This is. Not a game that I really knew exactly what to expect from. There's a question mark up here. What is that? Each time you lose a life, you'll be teleported further into the cave. Well, I hope not to lose any lives. I hope. We'll see, though. Um, yeah, it's something that I know, based on the graphics, uh, the aesthetic from it, what I saw looked a little bit blocky, a little bit unrefined quite yet, and I figured this was something that was maybe still being worked on. Oh, okay. Well, actually, I did get hit twice there. And now I just teleported past all those spikes. That's kind of nice, I guess. What's this question mark up here? But anyway, yeah, I'm saying I'm pleasantly surprised. All the spikes in the next uh, level will be changed into flowers. Great news for me, and I think I've just gotten through, uh, but I've lost all my lives now. And there's that magma again. Oh, this is a different magma. And things are a little bit more challenging. You know, despite the tiles being very much just like kind of square blocky things, there's still a little bit of character to the game. It's not... Oh, wow, look at all of this. There was a lot of text here. Okay, we're gonna try hard mode now, because I guess... Did I win? I thought I died there, but evidently you just need to, like, try it one time, and then you get to go on. I'll grab this heart. I'm not sure how uh, much the timer is gonna come into play here. Really have to watch out for these spiky flowers. All spikes next floor turn into flowers. Okay. Ready. Watch out for the falling rocks, and... Alright, now we're on a fish level again. Uh, I have a feeling there's probably not gonna be a great huge, diverse amount of different floors uh, that we're going to run into, unfortunately. I would love to see more, though, because, like I said, I think this is a concept that has some really good potential. Uh, the controls are pretty basic, too. I mean, they have that uh, kind of Game Maker feel to them. I'm not sure if this is actually made in Game Maker, but it does have that uh, slight inkling of, like, it's not really the most responsive. I mean, it it's responsive enough. You move where you move, but at the same time, you're kind of used to a little bit of momentum in your platformers to feel just right, wouldn't you say? And in this case, it feels kind of like as soon as you stop, you stop dead in your tracks, which is not always the best thing, uh, in my opinion. I, it's a, Maybe there's a few different competing schools of thought on that concept, but that's just my two cents. And what's this question mark going to do for me each time you live a little... Okay, teleport further in. Oh, and that was the end of my life again. Alright, so this time we will try again on hard mode, and I think this is an hourglass and question mark up here. Uh, you'll get some extra time or an extra life. Okay, so each floor is actually going to give me a little bonus now. That's kind of a cool little thing to have. Now that's filled with water. I don't really have to jump quite as much. That seems to happen pretty much every time as well. Uh, I could also see this being uh, sort of adapted to have some possibly roguelike elements uh, in that perhaps uh, each time you finish a floor, maybe there would be a currency that you could grab and sort of like 10 million or something, you would, uh, you know, proceed a little bit further in by unlocking some more things uh, by actually, you know, grabbing stuff, being careful of where you're jumping, and then making it to the end, uh, then going to a shop and trying to augment your character in some way, shape, or form. Uh, oh, this is not going well for me, and my chances are looking very dim here. I keep smacking into stuff. All right, we've got to be a little bit more careful. Uh, I imagine after a bunch of tries of this, you're going to really be able to quickly identify the things you need to avoid, and perhaps even have the timing necessary to handle that type of thing. All right, we're getting teleported further into the cave again. That's a lot of spikes right there. I guess that's perfectly fair, given that we're on hard mode, though. So now that I see what the basic formula is of uh, for this game, I'm kind of wondering, like, who's going to play this a thousand times for that achievement? You'd have to be really dedicated. I would think a hundred would actually be kind of, like, enough right there, if you're even going to go for sort of, like, a marathon-level uh, type of achievement like that. I mean, I guess you don't want your achievements to be easy, right? You're invincible for a while. Okay, I like being invincible for a while. As long as I know when I'm going to stop being invincible, that is very important. Uh, achievement unlocked, living with stone. Not sure what that means, but I'm happy I got it. Let's keep going over to the right here, watching out for fishies. All right, we made it through that floor completely unscathed for once. Not so much there, though. And wait for these guys to fall. Still have 25 seconds on the clock, so I'm doing okay for that. The timer so far has not played as much of a role as I would have expected. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, the background music, it doesn't really quite get me as pumped up as I figured I would be uh, at this. We just got an achievement, good at it, and very quick. And now we're going to try uh, extreme mode, which is five floors. 
But I figured the music would be a little bit more exhilarating and kind of like adrenaline building. In this case, it sort of feels like ambience. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as directly relevant to the game as I would have hoped, but still, you know, it sets an okay tone, I would say. Uh, all spikes the next level turn to flowers, okay. I feel like even more of those uh, kind of wild card challenges or, or uh, you know, question mark power-ups I think would be kind of cool. I like th the way that those mix up the formula here. This is a new type of floor that I definitely haven't seen yet. Uh, we've got an hourglass from this one, and, you know, it's not so dark that you can't see ahead of you at all, but it's kind of prohibitively dark, so you do have to kind of take your time to look a little bit. And this is taking ages for me to swim through. Oh, I got the You're Invincible for a while one, which is not really going to help me there. Oh, well, it'll help me here, though. I kind of thought your power-ups would run out uh, after each floor. Okay, we do at least get a blinky thing to tell us that our invincibility timer is about to run out, and I've got 31 seconds left. I might actually make it through this, believe it or not. Oh, God. Oh, bounced off those spikes. Uh, 25 more seconds. Is this the last floor? It does not tell me uh, dynamically what floor that I'm on, so that could be a bit of a problem for me. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's one more still, and we got another extra timer. Uh, this has to be the last floor, though, right? It's easy to lose track. I could also see this having a pretty fun, uh, like, a gauntlet mode, where essentially you just try to compete for uh, who can get the furthest out of your friends, you know, have a leaderboard or something. There we go, we actually did it. Mission successful on extreme mode. Uh, I'm probably not going to read this again. And I guess that's the really the issue, right? Like, since these text story chunks are kind of like, formulaic, you don't really feel a huge impetus to read them, because you kind of know, you're just going to keep saying, like, you completed the floor, you did this with the floor, you got some extra time, you got a power-up, spikes hurt you, and so on and so forth. So, I feel like there is definitely some cool stuff being explored here. I'm not sure if it's quite developed fully yet, but if this was used as a framework for something a little bit more expansive and ambitious, uh, even beyond this level of ambition, because I'm not saying this isn't ambitious, you know, the text thing, like I said earlier, is definitely something I haven't seen done before, uh, and I definitely enjoy uh, quick, fast-paced, randomly generated platformers. I think that is a really fun thing. I think that's why those runner games are so successful. It's a similar premise. This is just taken in a bit of a different direction. And then when you combine it with the story, you know, I think we've got fertile ground uh, for something pretty cool. So anyway, I think that'll do it for this episode. You get a good idea of what 80 Seconds Cave is about from it, hopefully. And if you want to go check it out, it is totally free. You can go ahead and grab it from the link that's going to be in the description. Uh, let me know how you do, or if you're able to achieve any of those, like, beat the game 500 times achievements, because, wow, I am proud of you if you can pull that off. That is a lot of dedication. Uh, but while you're in the description, feel free to check out some of my other social media links, stuff like my Twitter, my Facebook, my Twitch page, or even just uh, Indie-Impressions.com, where you can go if you want to find over 600 other episodes that have covered in the series. All kinds of indie games over there, all sorted and categorized, and hopefully there's something for pretty much everyone. But hopefully you'll come back again tomorrow. New episodes are every single day, so I'll catch you here, and I hope you have a lovely night. Later!